Okay, this is uh, Curtis Ostertags, and uh, this is his presentation he did with hires at the UC. Great picture, Curtis. That's a good picture, man. Look at that smile. <laughs> uh, hey, Curtis. Okay, so obesity is widely known as a major health concern in the world today. Many studies have concluded that obesity is a negative thing, but how obesity is affecting our muscles at the cellular level have not quite been thoroughly investigated. So the aim of this study was to determine how diet-induced obesity affects single muscle fiber function. Uh, by, we did this by looking at the relative force, the force per cross-sectional area being generated during contraction, as well as the maximum rate of shortening, or V-naught. We predicted that both force per CSA and V-naught would be impaired in rats with diet-induced obesity. Uh, for our study, we used skin fibers from the vastus intermedius muscle in young male rats from two diet groups, a diet-induced obesity group and a normal channel fed group. Uh, for our experiment, we, be we began by extracting a single fiber from a fascicle and mounting it on an apparatus. We then adjusted the length to 2.4 microns via laser diffraction. Uh. <laughs> To measure the relative force, the fiber is placed in a solution of excess calcium. Uh, calcium is an ion necessary for muscular contraction in our bodies to take place, so that's why so our solutions have high values of calcium. Um, uh, a force transducer measured the force being generated during contraction, and with this we can measure the relative force. Uh, the maximum rate of shortening, or V-naught, was assessed by a slack test. In a slack test, a fully activated fiber is rapidly shortened to percentile lengths of that fiber. For our study, we used 14 to 17 percent lengths. Uh, this rapid shortening causes the fiber to go slack. Uh, the muscle fiber then shortens to take up the slack, and which generates force. The time it takes for force to begin to rise, as long as the percentile length that the fiber is shortened at, is, uh, allows us to determine the maximum rate of shortening. So the results of these tests show that diet-induced obesity is not affecting uh, force per CSA or v and uh, which actually refutes our hypothesis. However, we know this only for a specific cohort of rats, and we do not know if this translates to rats of all ages and sexes, if it, if it translates to humans, or if being on the diet for longer would cause no single impairment. So the overall take-home message from this is, Diet-induced obesity does not necessarily impair uh, muscle muscle contractile function at the cellular level. That's it. So, quick question. Yes. So, what was your role that you got to do at this hires experience? What was my role? Yeah. What did you do? So, I worked with a postdoc student, and uh, uh, we we basically ran these tests, and so from mounting fibers on the apparatus to to reading the computer screen and seeing the force being generated. Uh, a big role of mine was uh, the analysis of uh, what's, what's happening in the tests. So I, I mainly analyzed the tests and uh, transferred data into sheets and then uh, compiled all the data together to get what we see in our results section. What was your favorite part of this experience? Uh, my favorite part actually came outside my own lab. So, uh, Every Friday, uh, all 22 of us in the hires program would get together and we'd go on a lab tour. So uh, we did many different lab tours, uh, but my absolute favorite was the gross anatomy lab, which is other, other, also known as the human cadaver lab. So uh, basically it was a really cool hands-on experience to get to learn about human anatomy and uh, also some, some diseases that uh, are, are seen in human, human bodies. And uh, I just found that really cool. Awesome. What is your takeaway from this experience, and what can you tell your uh, our, our Rocky View and Springbank Spring students? Uh, my take from this is research is a big, big world, and it's absolutely necessary for to further our society. So, uh, for students of Springbank and Rocky View, I say get involved in research, and uh, definitely if you're in grade 11, think about applying to the Hires program because it's a great opportunity to get involved. Oh, thank you, Curtis. That was fantastic. Thanks. You did really well. And Curtis, what are you speaking again? What am I speaking You're again? You're doing another, spe uh, another conference here? Yeah, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday? All right. Thank you very much. What was that, what's that conference for? It's uh, the Biomedical Engineering Undergraduate Research Symposium. That's a mouthful, eh? Yes. Yes, <laughs> it is.
So it's basically uh, mostly undergraduate summer students in the kind of field of biomedical engineering. And uh, as a higher student, I get to I get to join that and present my uh, data, or, sorry, my project uh, in front of a large group of people. Now, as a teacher who's done this before, not not a lot of students actually get to do that. So, well done on that for yourself. Thank you very that's much. Re that, I'm very, we're very proud of you. Thank you.